This is higher homework, it's unit 2 extension work and what we're looking at here is uh, question 1. Question 1 is in 5 parts, A, B, C, D and E and they're integration questions. Normally when we're integrating, what we'd be integrating between would be two limits here and the limits, what we would do is when we integrate that, we would then find the value. Now in the questions that we're doing here, all we're doing is we're working backwards a bit and what we're going to do is try and find the value that should be appearing in there. We know that the value is going to be greater than zero, so that's really what we're going to be looking at at the end of the question. So let's, let's go ahead and try and work these ones out. From questions A to E, they start easier and then they get more difficult as we go through the, the questions. So let, let's go ahead and do that. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this part here. Okay, so what I'm going to get is 3x cubed all over 3. I'll just put that in the square bracket and I'll have my limits a there, 1 there. And what that's going to equal is the 7 that's sitting there. Okay, if I just simplify that out, first of all, let's go for x cubed. And we're going between a and 1 and that equals 7. Now what we'll do is just like we normally do, we'll substitute the values in. To, to where we see x. So first thing I'm going to do is put the a in. So it's going to be a cubed. And I'm going to subtract. And the 1 now putting in there. That will be 1 cubed. And that equals 7. Okay, so let's go and try and solve this from here. I've got a cubed. And that's going to be equal to 7. That's going to work out to be 1. Subtract in there. I'm going to be adding on the other side. So it'll be plus 1. a cubed is equal to 8. And then to solve that, all I'll do is I'll take the cubed root of 8, and that should give me a final answer for a, which would be 2. Okay, they're non-calculator questions, so you'd be expected to be able to work this, uh, this all through. I'll show you where you're going to get your marks on this question. We're just going to go for three marks for this one. So first mark I'm going to give you is for integrating. So the integration there, if that's shown, then that'll be the, the first mark. I'll give a second mark for uh, substituting into it. And finally, I'll just give you one mark for getting the solution there. So this one here, for A, is out of three marks. OK, let's move along to part B. And remember, you can freeze the video and uh, you can do the work yourself and see if this, your solution matches up with mine. Okay, same as we did up above, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate first of all, and we're going to be trying to find out what value should be placed up here. Right, let's go for it. So that's going to give me x squared all over 2. Just going to integrate that out. And what I'll have is with 3, that'll just give me plus 3x. So that's me integrated it. I've got the limits are b and 2, and that's all going to be equal to 12. Right, what I'll do now is I'll substitute b in to this, uh, this part of the uh, equation that I have. And let's go for it. So I've got b squared all over 2 plus 3 times b. I'm going to subtract from that and it's going to be 2 squared all over 2. And I've got plus 3 times 2 there. And that's all going to be equal to 12. Right, what I'll do from there is I'll work out the, the numeric part here. So what I have is I've got b squared over 2. I've got plus 3b. That's going to be, I'm going to take away. So that's going to be 2 squared is going to be 4. 4 over 2 is just going to be 2. And that's going to be plus 6. That's equal to 12. So let's just gather that bit together. That's over there. Gather that together. That's going to give me 8. So I'm going to subtract 8. And that equals 12. Right, from there what I could do is just gather all the, the, the numbers, everything on the left hand side and make that equal to zero so that I can solve this part here. So I've got b squared over 2 plus 3b and that's going to be, I'm going to take the 12 over to this side so that'll give me minus 20. It's equal to zero. Okay. What I'll do from that, I'll uh, then try to remove this uh, fraction that's here just by multiplying everything by 2. 
So if I multiply everything by 2, what I'll get is I'll get b squared plus 6b and that'll be minus 40 equals 0. And then from there, what I'd be expected to do is to factorise that out. So let's just factorise that, putting it into two brackets and see if we can solve it from there. So I'd have a b there, a b there, two then multiply together to get b squared. And let's see, two numbers that multiply together to get 40, but I've got a difference of 6. So I'd go for, how about 4 and 10? And one of them's going to be negative, one of them positive. That sign there tells me that the biggest one's the positive. So that's the way it should work out there. So what I've got here is b is going to be equal to 4, or b is going to be equal to minus 10. Now remember up above that uh, what we've said is that a, b, c, d and e are all greater than zero. So that would rule out this part of here of being the, the answer. So what I'll say is that since, since b is greater than zero, then b equals four. And that's going to be my final solution for, for that question there. Right, let me see how we're going to mark this one. And what we'll go for is, I think we'll go for four marks for this question here. Right, I'll go for, for one mark for integrating first of all. I'll get the next mark for substituting the values in. So I'll just take one mark for this line here once I get something that would look like that there by substituting the values into that part there. Final mark uh, from, from this part here would be, let's go for, for this one here. And what that is, is getting it to a form where we can then solve the, uh, the final equation. And the last part, what I'll give is a mark for getting both of these, but also making that statement that uh, b is only going to be equal to, to 4. So what we've got is we've got this one here out of 4 marks. Right, let's go on to part c. Right, so again, they're just, just uh, increasing in uh, difficulty as we go ahead. Right then, so let's look at this one. So same type of thing that we're going to do. We're just going to integrate this out. So let's go for x to the power of 4. All over 4 would be integrated. And the limits of integration, we've got c and 0. And that's going to be equal to 20 and a quarter. That's going to be there. Let's substitute the values in. So c is going to get into there, so what I've got is c to the power of 4, all over 4, and I'm going to subtract 0 to the power of 4, all over 4, so that's going to be working out to 0, and that's 20 and a quarter that's sitting there. Right, so let's just uh, tidy this up a bit, so what we'll have is c4, all over 4, is equal to 20 and a quarter. Right, so, so to get rid of this fraction here, what I can do is I can multiply throughout by 4. Just multiply both sides by 4. What would that leave on the left-hand side? It should leave me with c to the power of 4. And that's going to be equal to 4 times 20 and a quarter would be 81. So from there, what I'd be looking at is c would be equal to the fourth root of 81. And if I think of the fourth root of 81, that would give me a positive or a negative answer. And what I should get from that is going to be positive or minus 3. So that's 3 times 3 would be 9, times 3 is 27, times 3, 81. Okay, and it would be the same for the negative as well. So remember again that uh, our answer must be greater than 0. So, so same thing, since c is greater than 0 then c is going to be equal to 3 only. Right, marks for this one here. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, 4 marks again. And the first mark will be for integrating. So just a straight integration for that one there. I'll get the, the next mark for substituting in the values. This line here. The third mark should come along. Let's see, we'll go for this part here. So getting the the fourth root of 81, and then the final mark for this part here. So what it would be is, it would be for getting c is equal to, and it must be plus or minus 3, and then just making the decision on where the, the solution is going to lie. So again, that uh, question there 
is out of 4. Let's look at D. Right, part D, what we're looking at is we're, we're just going to do the same thing again. We're just going to uh, integrate. So integrating this here would give me 2x to the power of 2 all over 2. And we'll have it all subtract x cubed all over 3. And that's going to be limits are going to be d and 0. And that's going to be equal to 1 and a third from there. Right, let's see. Let's substitute our values in here now. So I've got d that's going to get and 0 that's going to get. So first of all, we'll have 2d squared all over 2. And I'll subtract... Sorry, that's going to be a d that's going in there, d cubed, all over 3. I'll subtract from that, 0 going in as well, so that'd be 0 squared over 2, and I'll subtract the 0 cubed all over 3, and that's going to be equal to, and I'm just going to change that to a fraction, which would be 4 over 3. Right, for this part here, uh, this part is going to be equal to zero, so I've got this part here left. So let me just tidy that up and we'll see what that looks like. So from there, I've got, um, let's see. So the, the twos will cancel out there, and I could have cancelled them up above, which would have been probably a better way of doing that. But let's see what we've got. So I've got d squared minus d cubed all over 3, and that's going to be equal to 4 over 3. What I could do here is I could multiply by 3 throughout. So if I just multiply by 3, what I'll do is I'll get rid of the fractions on the bottom. So that'll give me 3d squared minus d cubed. And that would leave me with 4 on that side. If I bring it to the left-hand side, it'll give me minus 4. And that equals 0. And that kind of sets it up a bit better for me to, to try and solve this. I'd just like to reorder it. And the reordering, I'm going to put the, the minus d cubed First of all, so I'll go for minus d cubed, and that's going to be plus 3d squared, minus 4 equals 0. Now, to, to try to solve this here, it's a polynomial, so I'm going to look at some synthetic division to try and sort that out. And what I can do is I can try uh, a couple of values. So why don't I try and do synthetic division? And why don't I just try, I'll try one first of all. So remember, a bit, a bit of trial and error here and see how it works out. So I'm going to start with a minus one for this one here. I'm going to have a three there. I don't have an, a D on its own. So what I'll do is I'll just put in a zero for that. So just be, be careful of that one. And I've got a minus four that's sitting there. Okay, so synthetic division. So that'll give me minus one when I bring that down. Multiply that out. This one, that should give me a 2 here. Multiply the 1 times the 2, add them together, gather them up. 1 times 2 is 2, and I can kind of see that that's not going to work out. So that, that equals my remainder, and this is x equals 1 is not a root. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just go up to, to this side here, and I'll try my next value. So I'll just draw a kind of line down here. Right then, let's try, uh, I'll go for minus one. So let's try minus one in here. And what we'll do is just the same type of thing. And I'll use the same values, three, zero, minus four. And I'll try and solve that. So that's minus one to there. That'll give me a one there. Gather them together, four. That'll give me minus four to here. Gathering these together, minus four. Minus one times the minus four will give me a four and that equals zero, and that's my remainder. So what I can say there is, so, so therefore, I've got x equals minus one is a root. And because of that, I've got x, and that's going to be plus one, is a factor. So from there, I'm, I'm kind of there, almost there, you know, with solving this, uh, this question. Right, so, so from here, what I can then just write out, I'll just write out the uh, the factor. That's x plus 1 coming from here. And from here, because remember I was starting with, uh, it was a, a d cubed, so I'm glad I spotted that. So that's a d going in there, d. And I put a d in here as well. 
so it's d plus 1, and in here, what I'll say is that's going to be minus d squared, and that's going to be plus 4d minus 4, and that all equals 0 from there. And then what I can do is I can solve this part here. So I've got d plus 1, try and tidy it up a bit, put this into two brackets, and what we'll go for is I'll go for minus d and d in there to multiply these ones out and 2 and 2 and we'll go for a plus here and we'll go for a minus here and that should work out to factorise this trinomial out here. From this I can see that uh, I've got values here of d equals minus 1 from here I've got d equals 2 and from here, I've also got d equals 2, okay? So, what I'll just say is that since, since uh, d is going to be greater than 0, d equals 2, and that's my only solution for that one there. Right, let's see, see how we're going to mark this one. A bit more work in that, involved in that. So let's go for integrating. Once we've integrated, we'll go for substituting our values in. So that would be this line here. So that's the next line. Once I've done that, what I'd be looking for is getting a mark for setting this up to be able to solve it from, uh, from doing some synthetic division. I'll look for one mark for setting up the synthetic division. That would be this type of thing here. And getting a remainder equal to 0 when we process that through. I'll then go for a mark for getting this line here correct, so that would be getting the, the factors um, from the, the first part here, the, from the root that we use, and also for gathering the, the quotient together and putting it in there. And then I'll just go for one final mark for getting the solutions, but also stating the only solution that we've got for d is that it's equal to 2. So from that there, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 marks. So call this question out of 6. I've got one further, one further question to do. So the last one that we're going to do here is for e. And if I look at e, what we're going to do is just do the same type of work again. So first of all, we're going to, uh, we're going to just integrate. So go for... 6x squared all over 2, and that's going to be minus x cubed all over 3. I'll just get my square bracket around there, put the limits in, and that equals 36. What I'll then do is I'll just, I'll just sort this out a bit, so that's going to give me uh, 3x squared minus x cubed all upon 3. The limits for e and 0 equals 36. Now what we'll do is I'll substitute in. So it's going to be 3, it's going to be e squared, minus, and I've got e cubed, all upon 3, and I'm going to take away from that 3, 0 squared, minus 0 cubed, all upon 3, and that equals 36 there. Okay, this part here again is going to be equal to 0. So what I'll do is I'll just sort this bit out here. So I've got 3e squared, I've got minus e cubed all over 3, and that's just going to be equal to, if I bring the 36 over to the left-hand side, that'll be minus 36 equals 0, and I'll be able to set that up uh, ready to, to do some work on it. So what we'll do from here, uh, we'll multiply through by the 3 that's here. So... If I multiply by 3, what I'll do is I'll get rid of that fraction, and that should give me 9e squared minus e cubed, and that's going to be minus 108, and that equals 0. From there, what I'll do is I'll just reorder it, just have the, the highest power to the, the left-hand side, so it's going to be minus e cubed, and I'll have plus 9e squared minus 108, equals 0. So what we'll be looking at to do now is to solve this polynomial by uh, looking at some synthetic division. So what I could try is, I could try a number of things. So let me try the factors of 108. So let me just try 2, see if that works out. 
So I have two as a root, see if that works. So I've got uh, minus one here, I've got nine here, I've got zero in there for, for the value of just e to the power of one, and I've got minus 108. So if I work this through, I'll go for, bring the minus one down, then multiply it. Gather it together gives me seven. Multiplying that, gathering together gives me 14. Multiplying the two times the 14 gives me 28, and that should give me a remainder of minus 80. That equals the remainder. So from that there, I can say that uh, x equals two is not a factor because the remainder needs to be equal to zero. Right, let's let's go up to the, the top up here, and what we'll do is we'll try some other values. So what I could try is I could try, let's go for six, see if six works out for us. So all you need to do is try the factors out to, to see how, how they work along, and just make sure that you get one that uh, does work out. So just putting the same numbers up above as we did over here, and just working through. So I bring the minus one down, so that'll give me minus six. Gather them together, it's three. Multiplying again, 18. So that'll give me 18 there. And six times 18 would give me 108. And that leaves me with a remainder equal to zero. So since the remainder equals zero, so since the remainder equals zero, x equals six is a root, and because of that, I've got x minus 6 is a factor. Right, and what I'll do from there is I'll uh, write down the, the factors. So I've got x minus 6 is the first one. And I'll take down the quotient from here. So that'll be, well, I've done the x's again. So it's uh, not x, it's going to be e this time. So I've changed the letters. So that's going to be an e that's going to appear there. An e that's going to appear there. I'll go for an E here. Oops. Getting a wee bit tired, I think. So that's still a 6 that's going to be sitting there. Okay, and what I'll go for is minus, and that's just a 1, so that'll be minus E squared. And that'll be plus 3E, and that'll be plus 18 equals 0. What I'll then do is I'll, uh, I'll factorise this uh, bracket out here. So I've got e minus 6, looking a bit tidier. And to factorise that out, I'll go for minus e in the first bracket. And in the second bracket there, I'll go for e, that equals 0. I'll go for 6 and 3 would give me, would multiply together to get 18. And they would have a difference of 3. So I'll go for a 6 here, and I'll go for a 3 there. And the signs are going to be positive. So if I go for that there... Go for that there, that should work out. So that gives me 6 minus 3, yep. And that works, so that's that's it uh, factorised out to there. I'll go back and I'll change this to an E here. Okay, so from there I can see the solutions that I've got. So E minus 6, so E minus 6 equals 0. So E here equals 6. And I've got minus E plus 6 equals 0. So if I take the E over to that side, E equals 6, and here we've got E plus 3 equals 0, so E equals minus 3. So there's the solutions that I've got for this one here. And remember, since E is going to be greater than 0, what I'm saying is that E equals 6 alone, and that should be my final answer for that. Let's let's mark that, and that'll be the last one that we're doing, that's uh, the, the fifth one. So we're going to get one mark for the first integration that we've done, the integration, uh, one mark for substituting the values in, one mark again for getting it to the, the form where we're able to solve it. We'll go for one mark for setting up the synthetic division and processing it through and getting a remainder of zero. I'll then go for one mark for getting this line here. And finally, the, the last mark would be for getting the solutions here, the roots, all the roots, but then finally stating 
that there's on, only one solution to this uh, this question. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this will be out of six marks. So they've just gradually got a bit more difficult as we've gone through from A, B, C, D through to E. So hopefully, hopefully this has given you some of the, the way forward with uh, some of the, the extension work that you may be faced with in, uh, in the higher maths.